Dear viewers, welcome to Nursat Satellite Station and Telelumier TV. Let's start with the headlines. Pope Francis launches new appeal for peace in Ukraine. Their Majesties the King and the Queen receive the Zayed Prize for Human Fraternity. Bethlehem celebrates the release of the four Gospels in Aramaic. We also have, after the corona wave recedes, Jordan decides to gradually return to normal life. Welcome back. Their Majesties King Abdullah II and Queen Rani al-Abdullah received the Zayed Prize for Human Fraternity in its 2022 edition, the award that was handed over during a ceremony held at the site of the Founders Memorial in Abu Dhabi, in appreciation of their efforts to promote human brotherhood and respect for the diversity and peaceful coexistence. His Holiness Pope Francis expressed his happiness at awarding the award to their majesties because of their pioneering role in promoting the values of coexistence and dialogue, combating discrimination, empowering youth and women, and their support for the values of human brotherhood. Their majesties donated the value of the award to pay the financial obligations incurred by women in debt in the kingdom. The war between Russia and Ukraine has captured the attention of all countries of the world. His Holiness Pope Francis, after the Angelus prayer, launched a new appeal for peace in Ukraine, calling to stop the language of weapons and work on building peace and to open humanitarian corridors for refugees. His Holiness said, I would like to renew my invitation to all to pray and fast for peace in Ukraine, so that we are all brothers and ask God for an end to war. The Pope affirmed that whoever goes to war forgets humanity and puts his own interests and power above all else. The Pope said that he thinks of the elderly and people seeking refuge for them during these days, and the fleeing mothers with their children. These are brothers and sisters for whom we must open safe humanitarian corridors and host them. In the same context, his beatitude Theophilus III, Patriarch of the Holy City, issued a statement on the situation in Ukraine, saying, With sincere sympathy we follow the crisis that has existed since the last days in Ukraine, and we stand with deep concern over the human suffering of all brothers and sisters in Christ. Together with the rest of the heads of churches in the world, we invite all Christians to join in prayer for our world and the Ukrainian people. He added, here in Jerusalem, we raise our prayers from the place of the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God grant wisdom and courage to all leaders and concerned personnel. May the Lord enlighten them in search of dialogue, unity, and peace. On the occasion of the first anniversary of the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to Iraq, representatives of the Iraqi churches sent a message to the sons and daughters of the parishes in which they called for the necessity of completing the outputs and direction of the visit through a true deep ecclesial partnership and the pioneering ecumenical path with humanity, meekness and love. Remembering His Holiness's words saying that he could not remember Iraq without Christians. Christianity is the heir of the great civilization of Iraq and striving for good for all its components. The representatives of the churches added in their message, We are called to pray to obtain the mercy of the Lord and to offer ourselves and our goodness to help the needy. May the Lord bless us and create a pure heart in us. As true fasting is to break your bread to the hungry and bring the miserable who are expelled into your house, and if you see the naked, that you clothe them, and not to hide from your flesh. Ramzi Khouri, head of the Church's Affairs Committee in Palestine, sponsored the celebration held in the city of Bethlehem on the occasion of the launch of the four Gospels written by the monk Paul Khano in Aramic language. The Latin Patriarchal Vicar in Jerusalem, Bishop William Shomeli, and a large number of metropolitans and priests from different churches of the Holy Land participated in the celebration, in addition to official and diplomatic personalities and a crowd of believers. The monk Khano said that it was God's will that wanted him to revive the Aramic language in this holy land, indicating that it took him more than 400 hours working, which he spent inside the monastery of St. Mark of the Syriac Orthodox in Jerusalem, pointing out that the churches that still use the Aramic language are the Syriac Orthodox, Syriac Catholic and Maronite churches. After the heads of churches in the Holy City objected to the plan to expand the national park adjacent to the walls of the Old City, the Nature and Park Authority of Jerusalem Municipality announced freezing its plan in the same site, where there are properties of local churches and holy and important places of the Christian religion.
as the heads of churches considered this work as a deliberate attack on Christians in the Holy City, which forced Israel to withdraw from the implementation of this project after obtaining initial approval from the Jerusalem municipality to implement it on the 2nd of this month. And the heads of the churches in the Holy Land had confirmed in a letter they sent to the Israeli Minister of Environmental Protection that this plan will affect areas belonging to the local churches on the Mount of Olives, in addition to changing the character of the old city in Jerusalem. With the beginning of the current wave of the corona pandemic receding since last Tuesday, the Jordanian government began to work with mitigating measures to deal with this epidemic, so that the new measures include a gradual return to normal life, with the aim of stimulating the economy and revitalizing the commercial and tourism movement. The government decided to cancel the PCR examination for arrivals to Jordan from the country of arrival, and at the air, the land and sea crossing upon arrival. This applies to Jordanians and non-Jordanians. It also cancelled the registration requirement on the electronic platform for Jordanians before coming to the kingdom, and cancelled the same examination as a condition for entering parties, weddings and gatherings. Here, dear viewers, we have come to the end of our news, and those were the headlines. Pope Francis launches new appeal for peace in Ukraine. Their Majesties the King and the Queen received the Zayed Prize for Human Fraternity. Bethlehem celebrates the release of the four Gospels in Aramic. After the corona wave recedes, Jordan decides to gradually return to normal life. For more information, please visit our website www.nursajo.org. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, have a good day.